Krishna Pad, Madamahamsa, Hari Kajaya, Shishaman, Asri Bhakti, Nanda Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Ki, Yanam, the Goti Vajna, Rinna, Ki, Nama, Jaya, Srila Hari Dasta, Ku, Ki, Bhakti Devi, Tulsi Devi, Ki, Shishadara Gopi, Natla Lita, and Kishaka, Ki, Shishadara Gopi, Devi, Subhadra Marani, Ki, Shishikonita, all Claudius to the Son of the Lord, 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 all Claudius
สัตว์เรทำสาวรูปธรรมปฏิจจมาสัสธรรมคริสนาเจตัญญาเรวังชีรัตตาคริสนาปะดังสหกมาลิตาชีวิสัตมวิธัมสชาเฮคริสนาตุนสสินุริปินาโตจักรปะเตโรหิชาโรหิคาณิตาราดาคันตานมุสติเตตตะกันชนะโกรังดีพระเทวินดาเนชวาดีสุชาณุสุเทวีพระธรรมิตาริกีปัญจปัญจกัลปัสรูปยศชาคริปัสินุปยาเอกชาปัจจิตานาภาเมพิโยไมชนาเมพิโยนามอนาภาชัยสุริคริสนาเอกขันดาพระบุริตยานันดาเชียเวตตาจาระเทวสัตย์โกลาภักดินดาคาเรคริสนาคาเรคริสนาคริสนาคริสนาคาเรคาเรคาเรยามะคาเรยามะธรรมดามะคาเรคาเรโอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาจุเดวายาโอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาจุเดวายาโอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาสุเดวายาอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาสุเดวายาอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาสุเดวายาอมนะโมภะคะวะเตบาสุเดวายาฮัลโหลคริชนาบุตรมอร์นิ่งทุกท่านทุกท่านสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Five. Durvasa m u n i s life is spare, and we will read a series of verses without purport. And then we have one verse with a purport, which is number. Which one is it? Okay. Only one way. Read only six and seven. Read other verses. Read in the meantime. Okay, mix it up. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I mix the days. That will be tomorrow. Okay. So it's text number seven. Thank you. Six and seven. No, yes, I'm missing. Six was given. Six was given. I shall remember. Seven. I shall. So the context is the Vatican is offering prayers to the Sudarshana Chakra in order to. Protect. Sorry, Amarish Maharaj is offering prayers to the Sudarshana Chakra in order to protect Durvasa Muni. This is the context. Tuatte jasadharma mayena sambritam. Tuatte jasadharma mayena sambritam. Tamak prakasha jadrisho mahatmanam. Tamak prakasha jadrisho Ratya yaste makima giram pate. Ratya yaste makima giram pate. Vatru pamita sata sapara varam. Vatru pamita sata sapara varam. Vatya yasa dharma mayena samritam. Vatya yasa dharma mayena samritam. Tamak prakashas chadrisho mahatmana. Duratya yaste makima giram pate. Duratya yaste makima giram pate. Tuatru pamita sada sat para varam. Tuatru pamita sada sat para varam. Tuatte jasadar mama yena samritam. Tuatte jasadar mama yena samritam. Tamak prakashas chadrisho mahatmana. Tamak prakashas chadrisho Duratya yaste makima giram pate. Duratya yaste makima giram pate. Tuatru pamita sada sat para varam. Tuatru pamita sada sat para varam. Vatte jasa dharma maye na samritam. Vatte jasa dharma maye na samritam. Tama prakasha chadrisho mahatmana. Tamak 
by the Sudarshana Chakra, we can see his real identity and understand how inferior he is because of his dealings with the devotees. Vatejasa dharma mayena samritam tamak prakashash chadrisho mahatmanam duratya yaste mahima giram pate tuatrupa meta satasat paravaram. O master of speech, by your effulgence, full of religious principles, the darkness of the world is dissipated and the knowledge of learned persons or great souls is manifested. Indeed, no one can surpass your effulgence. For all things, manifested and unmanifested, gross and subtle, superior and inferior, are but various forms of you that are manifested by your effulgence. This is a very beautiful prayer, beautiful verse, uh, spoken by Ambarish Maharaj. And he's addressing the Sudarshana Chakra's master of speech. It's interesting. Master of speech. Can you think of something? Why the Sudarshana is master of speech? Vishirava Gopinata Ki Jaya. Because Sudarshan Chakra makes uh, even yogis like Durvasa Muni pray to Krishna. Okay, that will be able. It happened here, and we will see in the next verses tomorrow. We will see how that happened. And Durvasa Muni will glorify Krishna's pure devotee and will acknowledge his greatness. Yeah, Didn't you read the other day that Sudarshan Chakra was the voice of the Lord? Something like that? With the voice? Yeah, I heard something like that. I remember reading that you read something like that. Then you get Okay, I didn't... I don't, rem I don't remember now, but... I'm not certain about that anymore, but I, I was struck by it, like, really? This was in the previous... The previous yeah, verse. I you with it last, last, but I'm not entirely certain, but I remember thinking that is strange. Okay, we can. O Sudarshana Chakra, you are fire, you are the most powerful sun, and you are the moon, the master of all luminaries. You are water, earth, and sky. You are the air. You are the five senses sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. Is that one that you get closer? Yeah. And you are the senses also. And yesterday, almost parallel of a chuta, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you have thousands of spokes, O Master of the Material World, destroyer of all weapons, original vision of the Personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisance sent to you. Kindly give shelter and be auspicious to this Brahmana. O Sudarshana will, you are religion, you are truth, you are encouraging statements. This is the one you mean? You are encouraging statements. I, I, I said I might have understood, remembered it wrong, but I was really struck by that. I, I thought it was the voice, but I, I might be wrong. Well, encouraging statements are made with the voice, isn't it? Yeah. I, I wasn't there yesterday, but anyway, I might have gotten it wrong. You are the maintainer of the entire universe and you are the supreme transcendental prowess in the hands of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the original vision of the Lord, and therefore you are known as Sudarshana. Everything has been created by your activities, and therefore you are all-pervading. There is, sometimes in, in a Vedic astrology, the use of the uh, faculty of the speech is connected to the planet Mars. And the planet Mars is fire. So therefore there is a, a direct connection there. That the, and the sun sometimes also connects to, not only to health, but also to 
or whatever that is fired is connected to the speech. So there is certainly a connection there, or master of the speech. Of course, we can say that the Lord, with whatever of his senses, as we sing every morning, Angania si esa calendrilla brinti mante, pasianti panti calayanti chiram jaganti, ananda chimmaya satuch palavigra hatsia, govinda madi purushanta mahambaja. With whatever of his senses, he's able to perform the functions of the other senses. So therefore, we can look at it from both points of view. Uh, Directly, fire is connected to the speech. You need some fire to speak. When the body was telling me yesterday uh, the, how, how that the body was expressing, how was feeling fear in public speaking, I was thinking, of course, we don't feel fear in <laughs> public speaking. It's, it's normally it's like that. It's generally, there is a, a stage. We learned this in the teacher training course stage fear when you are addressing people and some level of stage fear is healthy because it shows respect for the public, for the audience. So that's good. Too much fear is not good. So anyway, when this devotee was saying that, but actually master of the speech is the Lord. So we can speak only if the Lord allows us to speak. We may be very good speakers by the grace of the Lord, but if the Lord doesn't allow us, that day we can say nothing. Anyone has experiences like that? Even if you are not such a great speaker. Uh, but, uh, that you, sometimes you are confident you can speak and then you cannot speak. Did that ever happen to you? And sometimes you think I'm not able to say anything, and because the Lord is a master of the speech, if he makes you speak like the Lord touched Dhruva Maharaj with his conch shell, and then Dhruva Maharaj, even though he was a little child, he was able to speak, speak very eloquently. So this is the, whatever we are able to do is by the mercy of the Lord. So, Amarish Maharaj is praying to the Sudarshana and glorifying in this way the Lord because Srimad Bhagavatam says that it is better to uh, glorify Tadija, actually it's not from the Bhagavatam, it's verses from the Puranas, that the best worship is the worship of Lord Vishnu, but even better than the worship of Lord Vishnu is the worship of Tadija or whatever is related to Lord Vishnu. So Sudarshana Chakra is Tadiya. He is a devotee of the Lord. He is the energy of the Lord. All the energies of the Lord are personal and are surrendered to the Lord. The glance of the Lord is personal. The Lord is Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, we as Jiva Tattva, energies of the Lord, we are personal. And whatever energy of the Lord is there is personal, ultimately. Like, for example, here we see, sometimes we hear that the Brahma Jyoti, which is the impersonal effulgence of the Lord, appears contradictory. How everything is personal, and how he, it is impersonal. Uh, energy of the Lord. How is that? What are you talking about? This seems to be like there was that lady who was the president of the anti cult movement in Spain. Uh, God bless her, Maria Rosa Boladeras. And she said, these people, they eat, they eat this, uh, she was referring to, these big balls, full of sugar and they get intoxicated and they say anything. Mm -hmm. And then they talk philosophy nobody can understand. Mm -hmm. So how is it that the Lord is, every energy of the Lord is personal and yet the Brahma Jyoti is impersonal? Any thoughts on that? Any reflections? 
in the best contradictory. There is no contradiction. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a shadow. There is a person, there is a shadow. So Brahmajyoti can be seen as a shadow. Yeah. Um, Brahmajyoti can be seen as a shadow. Shadow. Which, which follows the person. Shadow, shadow. 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 Okay, I mean, but it's a luminous shadow. Okay, you can say it's very luminous, but it's... Okay, you can say it if you want to put it like that, okay. It's luminous, very luminous. I'm not sure I'm getting your point. So the persons who march into the Brahmayoti. It's about their ability to realize. So they cannot realize the personality of Brahma. It's not that Brahma is impersonal, but it's about those. Who okay, they cannot realize. Okay. They cannot realize, but ultimately Brahma Yoti is personal because it's not different from Krishna, you could say in one way. This is a stated in Srimad Bhagavatam in in the Vadanti Tat Tat verse. Some of you will remember. Padanti tattva avidas, tattvam yakyam atvayam, brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shaktyate. Learned transcendentalists know the supreme non dual truth as brahman, paramatma, and bhagavan. So, in that sense, it's not impersonal. It is perceived as impersonal, but it is actually Krishna's energy. But it must be personal. For example, we read in, in Sri Upanishad, Sri Prabhupada writes, the Brahma Jyoti is the source of the Jiva Tattva, Jiva Shakti. How many people come from the Brahma Jyoti? If we take it like that, that statement, we are coming from the Brahma Jyoti, because ultimately the Brahma Jyoti is not different from Krishna. And we see here some of the statements made by Amarish Maharaj, by Srila Prabhupada in the purport. Maybe to some of you will resonate with some statements referring to the Brahma Jyoti. Can you remember some? I can read again for you some of the statements. By your effulgence, full of religious principles, the darkness of the world is dissipated, and the knowledge of learned persons or great souls is manifested. It will be also a Brahma Buddha stage. In, if we talk about the Brahma Jyoti, if we talk about Sudarshana, but there are many similarities there. Indeed, no one can surpass your effulgence, for all things manifested and unmanifested gross and subtle, superior and inferior, are but various forms of you that are manifested by your effulgence. And then Srila Prabhupada in the purple writes, the illumination of this in this world emanates from the effulgence of Sudarshana, the original vision of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Can you remember any statement made by Srila Prabhupada in other parts of his books, in his purpose, about the Brahma Jyoti, which may be similar to this one. <coughs> in the first, for Bhagavad Gita, in the first chapter, I think it's in number four, mm -hmm. Prabhupada is explaining Bhagavan, the position of Bhagavan, and Brahman and he's giving analogies, so something, at least in the two places. <coughs> okay. I, I don't remember the exact quote, so, yeah, so I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but uh, any uh, specifications on, on this? I'll give you a, 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 hint, a, a hint. Uh, any connections to the sun? The Brahma Jyoti and the Sun. Uh, just by 
just like the sunshine is the animation of the sun, similarly Brahmajyoti is the intelligence of Krishna. Okay, that's good. That's uh, that's correct. That's ex used as an example, but more direct. Where is the sunlight coming from, according to Srila Prabhupada? From the Brahma Jyoti. Prabhupada writes that in different parts of his books. And here, Srila Prabhupada, is, it appears to say it's coming from Sudarshan. So in one way, in one way, the, the light of the Sudarshana and the light of the Brahma Jyoti is non different, a dual, non dual. The supreme person is non dual, and and there, and Sri Prabhupada writes here: the illumination in this world emanates from the effulgence of Sudarshana. The illumination of this world, as we see, comes from the sun. And Sri Prabhupada writes elsewhere: the sunshine comes from the Brahma Jyoti. So therefore, at least in one sense, there is no difference between the illumination of Sudarshana and the illumination of the Brahma Jyoti. Even the electric light, even the electric light, somewhere uh, radiates uh -huh. uh, from the Brahma Jyoti. It ultimately comes from there because without light we cannot produce any electrical connection. Any light, yes, electricity is in the, we see in the, in the when there is a, a storm, we see electricity there. Yes. So it's coming ultimately, yes. Yes, very good. Any thoughts or comments on that? It may sound a bit technical, but it's the topic of the verse so we are discussing. The topic of the verse. To me, to me, it seems like Brahma Jyoti is a, a place uh, which is created by Krishna, by Krishna, or it's it's his it's his it's his energy of origins, to give opportunity for those who don't want to recognize him to just forget Krishna and to be there for offenders actually. Okay, good. Yes, to those who, who are impersonalist or monistically inclined, gives opportunity there. And from there, if they don't want to surrender to Krishna, they have to come back. If they want to surrender to Krishna, like the four Kumaras, then they can, no problem, they can go back to Godhead. But those who don't want, like the Aruhya Krishna verse, who don't want to surrender to Krishna's not to speak, they have to return to the material world. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's a, a point. It's a, Krishna is giving a place for for those people also. Maybe Maharaj is interesting uh, that example, I forget his name, this demon who was killed by Sudarshan and he went out of everybody saw, he went out of his body and emerged into Krishna's body. So he went to the Brahma Jyoti. What was his name? He was well, it happened in different, maybe in different cases. I can remember that of Shishupal. Shishupal, that's yes. But then Shishupal went back to Vaikuntha because he was a Jai, Jai Vijay. So first he merged and then he went back. We see that in different cases. In some cases may not happen, it depends on which, in which cases. But ultimately the mercy of the Lord is required <coughs> to go back home, back to Godhead. And for getting the mercy of the Lord, we need to surrender to Krishna's lotus feet. And to surrender to Krishna's lotus feet means to surrender to Krishna's devotees, because Krishna's devotees are situated at Krishna's lotus feet. And therefore, here in today's purple, Srila Prabhupada writes, generally people accept a powerful yogi like Durvasa Muni, as wonderfully superior. But if such a person is chased by the Sudarshana Chakra, that means the Lord is glancing at him with anger, because the Sudarshana has been described as the glance of the Lord. So the glance of the Lord can, can be given as a blessing for the devotees. We go for Darshan, 
every day so that the Lord glances upon us and then we get blessed by getting the glance of the Lord. But if we offend the bodies, we get the glance of the Lord with anger and that's Sudarshana. So this is what Tulvasa Muni was getting because offending a pure devotee. But if such a person is chased by the Sudarshana chakra, we can see his real identity and understand how inferior he is because of his dealings with devotees. So this is very important. We become a, quote, higher or lower inferior on the basis of how do we deal with devotees. If we deal with a service spirit, with gratefulness, with appreciation, with respect, then we get the blessings of the Lord. His lotus eyes will look at us. But if we deal with the devotees in an offensive way, with anger, with resentment, with envy, then we will get the glance of the Lord in the form of Sudarshana. And Sudarshana will chase us away. And we may even be kicked out of the association of the devotees. So we should be careful to serve devotees very nicely. That's very important that we, we do that. Of course, I mean, to uh, be kicked out of the association of the devotees doesn't necessarily mean to live uh, 10 kilometers difference. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, to I'm talking about being, not having the opportunity of having the association of the devotees. When the devotee was telling recently how he experienced separation from the devotees in a country uh, that the devotee was for six months where there were no devotees and really was missing the devotees. So sometimes Sudarshana may punish us in, like that if we commit offenses. Of course it's difficult to understand the Lord, but the point is that we become higher or lower based on how do we deal with devotees. Any comments or questions on these points? Yeah, you could say, uh, you could say because you are devotees, or when you, you or anyone who is a devotee, when he or she does something wrong, particularly to a devotee, may notice that the Lord is not pleased by losing the taste or by feeling, uh, having an ill feeling in the heart. So then we need to respond to that and go back to the devotee and say, I'm sorry, I, I criticize you with envy or I, or uh, yeah, or, or do a service to that devotee to, to show that actually I don't want that. Because ultimately you, we may not want to, so you could compare it in this way if you like, if it inspires you. It's certainly is connected. When the Lord is not pleased, then we are not pleased. Mm -hmm. So guilt can be, in many occasions, unless it co it's coming from a um, transcendental dimension, M guilt, is, like in the case of the Gopi, sometimes it felt guilt, but that was another level of guilt. It was not due to offense, but it was, was an experience very difficult to understand for those who are in this world in relation to, to Krishna. But generally speaking, guilt, it's a material feeling and maybe connected to this pleasing 
and this, the Lord being displeased. And therefore we feel displeased as well. Because we are part of the Lord. So when the Lord is displeased, we are displeased. We are not happy. Did you know the Emperor? Uh, last time, Mother, he was telling us we can think about offenses and uh, continue questions about it. So one, 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 one thought in my mind is from social point of view regarding the offenses, I see in our society, this society from 70s, from 70s to now, the greatest offenders, those who were child abusers, they were somehow going around without being kind of addressed and punished in a proper way. At least that's the standard of majority of society. At the same time, on the other side, you can see for the small offenses, interaction among devotees, we are sometimes so harsh, uh, one to, uh, to another, and we cannot let it go. And those who are the biggest kind of troublemakers and disturbers in society, they were not addressed. So that's kind of disbalance, severe disbalance, and I found that our society doesn't know how to address it properly. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, to whatever extent, this will be a topic that can be debated and some will agree with you, some will say, no, it's not that much. I mean, there were cases, but they were, in the beginning, it, it, I don't mean to undermine those so heavy offenses that were corrected and some, some may say it took too long to, to react. But the fact is that he's created the Child Protection Office and, and the Child Protection Act that in cases. And if we look, not just, it says, just underline a point, saying how it can be debated exactly the point you are making from the social point of view. Because child protection, ch child abuse in ISCON became manifested, became kind of, of visible to the eyes of the leaders more or less at the same time that it became visible in, in the mainstream society. I know because I wrote an article which is published in ISCON Studies Journal on the history of ISCON education. And in the article, I interviewed those ISCON leaders who were the ministers of education for ISCON. The first minister of uh, education for children in, in ISCON was Jagadish Prabhu. And in the interview, he expressed why he resigned as minister. And was when the, the whole thing of child abuse exploded on his face. He didn't know what, how to deal with it. Because in society, nobody knew. He didn't know what to, what to do. And he decided to resign. I cannot solve these problems too big for me. And as a very honest person that he is known and he is, he decided to resign. I cannot tackle this. And then the ministry was working on it. And later on, took some time. The Child Protection Office was created in, if I remember correctly, was in the late 90s, could be, if I, uh, I remember correctly. And many people were very upset about that, how this thing can happen in a spiritual society. But we should remember that we're a spiritual society with people coming from an abusive society. We have been abused and therefore we have the tendency to abuse others. This is this happens. So therefore we need to be careful on how to manage, we manage our society. But then going back to your, your more the spiritual part of the question, that the people who are small and commit the small offenses are censured, are corrected. And people who, are, who make big offenses sometimes appear to get away. And also they are protected. That's another side effect, which is, at least for me, very clear. Those who are bigger abusers, who are really disturbed, they are not protected by the society, by the officials. And that's something which is kind of disharmony from my point of view. Okay, then, I guess if that's the case, you see that this is happening in some cases. Well, there is no way how to deal with that. 
uh, speak up and uh, I mean speak up to proper places in ISCON where this you could make a point, you could present this, you have to see where, you could present it to the GBC body, you could present it to the GBCAC, you could present it to to the uh, ISCON result, and you could present it. And if, and if all that fails, then you go and talk to Opina and say, Opina, this is too much. Look what's happening. Do something, please. And Opina may do something. And if he chooses not to do something immediately, what can we do? We need to, to, to take even so-called injustice, so-called meaning social injustice, Take it if if after going everywhere I cannot change it, then I pray to Krishna and then I have to de decide who to go about it. I don't know if that makes sense. It. Any other questions or comments? You wanted to make a point, Kruda Prabhu, at some point? Because I saw. What about this? I wanted to hear your opinion about one thing that is preached. Um, sometimes it sounds confusing, but uh, I think Bhakti Mottakur says this sometimes. Uh, the Swami often speaks about this, about the loving only Krishna. You, you understand? You know, yes, the yes, that's the nectar of devotion, the description of Prema Bhakti. Yes, just, you know, to love to love Prema means to love only Krishna. And then it seems like, okay, so you don't love anybody else. Is that true? Uh, well, it doesn't exactly mean like that. Uh, loving only Krishna as compared to normally what I, we understand by love. Love in the material world may be expressed in different ways, can be conjugal as friends, as father to children, or vice versa, and so on. But when that love is disconnected from Krishna, it is not real love. So that love, if that love distracts me from loving Krishna, therefore it's actually rejected by the pure devotees, and therefore they choose to love only Krishna. But because Krishna is absolute, when we love Krishna, love for Krishna becomes manifested also as compassion towards other living beings. And therefore there is, there is softness of the heart towards other living beings. And there is love to others, knowing that they are parts and parts of, of, parts and parcels of Krishna. And therefore, they are parts and parcels of Krishna, I'm loving Krishna, and loving also everyone. But it's loving only Krishna as compared to loving any other person separately from Krishna. This is how I understand the, this topic. Is that okay? Yeah. And in this connection also, Prabhupada mentions that it is compared to watering the root of the tree. If you, uh, Krishna, very good, very good. When you water the root of the tree, all the branches, all the twigs, leaves, everything is nourished. When we love Krishna, we are loving everyone. And we can do something meaningful for everyone. Any last point, last question? Uh, it was just about the light. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> Prabhupada says that because Krishna's body is blue and uh, his effulgence we can see in this world as the blue sky, it is coming from the Brahmajati and Krishna's body. So that's yes, very good. Very good. Sri Takirti Prabhu speaks about that in some of his experiences with Sri La Prabhupada. And how Sri La Prabhupada mentioned that the blue of the sky is related to Krishna's blue. Even may not be exactly the same, but it's related and it's seen be as beautiful because ultimately it's coming from Krishna, from his effulgence. Thank you very much. We end here. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. <laughs>
know, his problem, you know, they could have got to the police to some extent. But I felt, it made me lose my faith in the GBC. And I'm waiting for the GBC, for the proper disciples to go and ask having a new GBC, and hopefully something will change. But I personally have no faith in the GBC. I will follow them because I did this for the body and I have to. But my heart is not there. I have no zero faith. Let this come 
because he was given a choice. He had to stay, he had to, to leave his, his passion. Uh, he, his abuses were, were uh, not sexual, were not physical, were, were, were psychological. And he had paid according to a judge on this idea. And he took him and said, oh, this is not her story, it's the one. You are pushing me on to pay again for something I can't already pay. You judge it when you say anything, then I make this one. Yeah. And that's what he did. He left. And, and you can say it's very good. Some people would say this one lost a person who could make new devotees in the society. That's because he's, he's one of the most active creatures yeah. in America. I don't I don't have observations and I respect him, mm -hmm. but I keep my If I meet him, I'm not, I'm not going to him, so I don't know what he tells and I don't think it's my business to, to judge him. But what, what, uh, what I mean is that it's not so simple. The cases are, are not so simple. I want to say that, yes, people who are big, who are friends in the big uh, levels may take advantage of that for and, and that is because for the sake of those few people, we have lost a big part of an entire generation of the voters. But and that is a lot worse because they are second generation. They could have done a lot more good to our movement than those few people. That one guy yes, who was a preacher. Mm -hmm. But had we dealt with him properly, to the satisfaction of our second generation, to the abused people, we might have kept those people, but now you lose both. Because they were dissatisfied and he is dissatisfied. So ultimately, by not acting properly, by not taking into consideration those kids. I mean, and that, and that is what is upsetting me. And it's not that it's completely wrong. It's still there. It's still there. And still when people point it out, they get pushed aside. Yeah, but for example, to take the example where I think it's example you are thinking of, in my yes. uh, I don't know the details either, I cannot really touch in detail. I know that what my understanding of what I have read in, I read the book written by this woman who... My, my karma? Yes. yes. And the way he actually talks about the king, he doesn't point his finger at him as one of the biggest. What he is, what he has been uh, kind of, uh, the people who are not satisfied with him, who know the details, mm -hmm. my understanding of what they say is that he did some, some beating, I think, not as scary as the other one, and he was considered responsible because he was the head of the institution when the abuse happened. Not that he, he did anything himself, but that he didn't. It turned out like that. Yes, or he, he, he didn't take responsibility for what happened. That is just as bad. That is just as bad. He, he, he didn't take responsibility for what happened. Yeah. So, and then you can say, okay, but he's still in the back of the, of the school there. See, and, and he never apologizes. When people approach him, he becomes aggressive. It's, he, does, he didn't apologize. At least if they show some humility. But he doesn't. I can't listen to him. I can't see him. I'm happy we never invite him here. But I didn't go to his class. It's, it's, okay, okay, if somebody has no humility, if somebody, if something that big happened on your watch, you show extreme humility. And he doesn't. That shows that there's something fundamental. And, and for me, that is kind of, it's a disqualifying for anybody. He's not about the initiation. He's, 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 he's swallowing that. Yeah, but it's, so it's he turns around the world to get crosses. But he does take, I cannot touch him because it's kind of, but. Yeah, I'm a mother of three kids, you see. And my kids and my, my father in law was a child abuser. He abused his own daughter, he abused his own grandchild. He never went to prison and he always met the victims. So I've, I've been around this atmosphere and my first reaction when I found out was castrating. 
and then send them to prison. Because these children, the damage will never go. And we forget that. And as, as the, the GBC, they don't seem to think about that. And that is a problem.